clear and mild in the southeastern U.S., but in the Rockies and Great Basin area, the remains of Tropical Storm K and a new front arriving from the Pacific. Welcome to Forecast Lab. Well, here I am. I've never been a big fan of getting on camera because there's a lot of stuff to worry about, like the lights and the camera itself, but we'll go ahead and give it a, a go here. Let's talk about our weather, and I'm going to shrink me a little bit because I'm not really the focus of this program. So the surface map for this afternoon, we've got this frontal system in the Dakotas. There it is. Warm front heading north, and you can see those warm temperatures there in South Dakota, up to 94 near Yankton. That's pretty hot for mid-September. And 90s, likewise, all the way down through the Great Plains, and then we hit some moisture, some storms, and a little bit of a dry line. I did not draw that as a dry line because the moisture gradient is really not that strong. We go from 63 at Oklahoma City to 55 at Amarillo, 51 at Albuquerque, so that's pretty minimal. However, out west, we've got this other front, and I had a kind of a hard time placing that. I can tell that there is cold air across the Great Basin area. Look at those 70s and even 67 around Austin, Nevada. However, as you go down towards Phoenix, 92, 88 at Tucson, and 83 at El Paso, the air out here is a little bit cold, the warmer air in the deserts, of course, but it does cool off significant, significantly as you go north. And the San Joaquin Valley down to 77. That's much better than 116. That's for sure. Big change from a week ago. So somewhere in here, I've identified this front. And if I look at the thickness lines, that's these red lines that you see in here. That does support a frontal boundary. That's a gradient right there along the Southern California coast and another gradient up in Montana and the Dakotas. But where is it exactly in between? I'm not really sure. I suspect it's probably in here, maybe down to Vegas. You can see that cyclonic sense to the wind direction. However, the upper level, let me, let me show you the 500 millibar chart. And thanks to Embry-Riddle University for these great graphics. We've got this westerly flow coming up on the west coast and heading up into the Dakotas and then the stronger flow located across eastern Canada. So the main polar front jet up in that area and then this other branch right down here. This is a split flow pattern. I really need to zoom this out a little bit. Let me switch over to the continental chart. And quite honestly, I should have started with this one. There's the main polar front jet up to the north from southeastern Alaska across the Canadian prairies and down into the Montreal area. And then the split flow pattern, that's going to be it right there. So that does suggest that that frontal system does have some support into California. And then somehow it links up with the other front located in the Maritimes. In between, though, a definite ridge, so no wonder we have some hot temperatures on the Great Plains. But further out west, troughing. Haven't seen that in a while. And let me just show you what happens here. Let's go into the next week to week and a half, and you can see that troughing really take hold on the west coast. That's going to be a major trough right there. We're looking at uh, 17th. That's going to be Friday. And let's go a little bit further and we get a cutoff low, or that could be a barotropic low, one of the two. It looks like the main polar front jet well down to the south, so yeah, I'm not too sure that that's a cutoff low. That's probably a strong occlusion sinking south, and let's go into next week. Yeah, that's definitely going to have some impacts on California there. That is uh, the 19th, and then it finally gets picked up with the prevailing westerlies and moves into the Rockies around the 22nd. So let me check the old Microsoft calendar. 22nd, that's going to be next Thursday. So at that time, probably some impacts in the northern U.S., but 
down to the south, it looks like we're going to be under the influence of that ridge. Let me back that up one more time so you can kind of see what's going on. In fact, let me just play the loop. Let's do that. Yeah, there's that ridge, the upper level high, kind of focused in this area right here. And it does expand going into next week. There it is. Taking root over Texas, so probably some warm weather towards the weekend. And that ridge kind of expands. So we're going to see that heat that we're expecting in the central plains this weekend. That will expand eastward as we go into the following week. And we are going to see the remains of a typhoon moving into Alaska. That's it right there. It is somewhere between Japan and Midway at this time, but that's going to be heading north, winds 80 to 70 knots, and check out the GFS. There it is, Typhoon Merbok, M-E-R-B-O-K, that is moving north, and look at those pressures down to 945 millibars as it passes near Shemya, 944, 939. So that is going to be quite a deep storm. And as it arrives into southwestern Alaska around Friday or Saturday, that's going to bring winds up to 65 miles an hour along the coast, gusts up to 75 miles an hour in some areas, and a storm surge of 3 to 6 feet above the normal tides. With the tropical moisture surge heading north, that could bring one to two inch rainfall amounts in Alaska. So that'll be something to look at on Friday. And let's go ahead and take a look at the temperature records here in the lower 48. For this afternoon, no records really, except maybe Marathon tying the record for the date set in 2007. For tomorrow, on Thursday, no records to be found. Well, on Friday, much the same marathon. Once again, coming close to the record. There is Saturday. And on Sunday, now we're starting to see some heat showing up. 96 at Abilene and 84 at, uh, what is BDR, somewhere in New York. For Monday... There's the heat, 102 at uh, McCook, Nebraska, 94 at Kansas City, and 93 at Columbia. And on Tuesday, there's that heat spreading up into the Great Lakes and into the eastern U.S. Temperatures up near 86 at JFK Airport. If you're in Minneapolis or Milwaukee, Chicago, Cleveland, and you notice it's hazy, you're right. There's been smoke spreading in from the northwestern states, and that's partly due to that heat wave that we had last week. It's made some very favorable fire weather conditions, and some areas have seen wildfire problems, and that's the resulting smoke being carried as far east as Massachusetts. And there's the state overlays for you. You can definitely see that northwesterly flow just plowing right into the northeastern states, New England. Cold air advection, cumulus, with showers going up from Plattsburgh all the way up to Burlington, Quebec City, and Caribou. And in fact, out there in the Maritimes, there's been some strong storms. Those are moving out towards Newfoundland. We haven't looked at Newfoundland in a while. Let's take a look at, at that area. There we go. As we start the animation, this is about... Uh, 11 a.m., 12 noon, Atlantic time, and you can see the storms going up right there, some anvils, and bring that forward. Numerous storms moving into the St. Lawrence Gulf area and into Newfoundland, and there's an MCS there. Let's check out the Canadian radar, see what that looks like. Well, it appears our MCS is between radar sites. There's not much coverage here. And we are viewing the storms from a far distance. That's probably a good 100 miles. So we're mostly catching the tops of the convection. But anyway, yeah, there are some strong intensities out there, mostly south of Newfoundland. And probably those storms will be moving into the province itself towards St. John's maybe this evening. There's the overnight lows last night. Some very cool readings in the Midwest. 
temperatures well down into the 50s in Illinois, into Indiana, and all the way down towards Arkansas. In fact, northeast Texas, mid-50s and 50s, all the way down towards Lufkin and Jasper. Let's take a look at the uh, water vapor imagery. And this goes all the way back to Monday. There's that wound up occlusion over Indiana. And we roll that forward. You can see that dry air coming down into North Texas, into Alabama, Georgia. And that's some very dry air. Let's take a look at one of the soundings. Let's try Lake Charles, because that's right there in the middle of it. And there you go. Plenty of dry air dew points down around minus 50 to minus 60, up above 15,000 feet. And let's see, 825 millibars, that's going to be about 6,000 feet. Dew points all the way down to about minus 20 Fahrenheit. That is some very dry air. And the base of that looks to be at about four to 5,000 feet. So very likely this afternoon, some very blue skies out there and some light winds in the lower and mid-levels. And there's the Lake Charles Sound and Climatology. This is at SPC. They've got a really nice sound and climatology interface. And you can see that precipitable water, 0.69 inch, that's near the lowest ever observed at this time of the year. Some very dry air has come south. Let's take a look at the forecast around the U.S., Okay, starting out this afternoon, there it is, southerly flow coming up from the Gulf. A deep lee side low, although some of it is frontal in nature. The main lee side trough right in that area there. And we roll that forward. Some thunderstorms popping up there in Kansas for Thursday afternoon. And going into Friday, not much going on. More thunderstorms in Nebraska. But you can see some changes take place out there in the western U.S. around Saturday or Sunday. And there it is. You can see the decreasing thicknesses, an offshore system as well. And that comes into California around Monday or Tuesday. And that's probably going to drop the snow levels down to about 8,000 feet. So we may see some snow-capped peaks out there in the Sierra Nevadas. Not really expecting any significant rains, but could get some showers, certainly. And winds, that will be a factor there. Winds up to 50 miles an hour possible in the Sierra Nevadas. And that could spike the fire danger, at least temporarily. So that weather system will be hanging around California for a day or two. Some of the energy crossing the Rockies there. And you can see things coming together there. Lost it. Uh, where was that? Yeah, there we are about midweek. Some polar air coming down from Alberta and Saskatchewan moving south. You can see the energy on the backside of the system. Quite significant there. Some snow being indicated. Good lift back behind that frontal low. So that's going to be a pretty strong upper level trough coming in that backside there. And GFS going for a little hurricane far off the Bahamas, moving north. Doing battle with that ridge up to the north. And GFS decides to take that into New York, Hurricane Sandy style. But this is 270 hours out, so I would not give that any credibility. But it will be something to watch. This is a good hypothetical picture of what could happen in some parallel universe. So we're not going to worry about that. We'll come back to that next week. But the main thing that we're certain of is that the risk will be around the 24th and 25th, so that we'll bear watching. And I think that'll be about it for today. Hope you enjoyed the weathercast. I haven't really talked too much about my military service. I should probably go ahead and push that to the front a little bit more. This is me with my graduating class. That's me back there many years ago. We started with a class of, I think it was 43 people, and this is how many was left. Very, very intensive six and a half month course, about 1,100 classroom hours. So this was quite an experience and that gave me a lot of my background in meteorology. 
And that's what I hope to convey to you on this program. That's a picture of me during the forecast class visiting my uncle up in Chicago. And on my right, that's Greg. He's the one that supplies the drone footage that you see at the end of every weather cast. This is another picture of me back in another era with the forecasters, technicians, staff, and families of the weather station at the Tonopah Test Range. You can see the F-117 up here. That's the reason we were up there. And yeah, that's me over there on the left side. And for a while I was involved in storm chasing. You're probably familiar with my storm chasing handbook. That's me with Jim Leonard, the late Jim Leonard. No longer with us, but that's him working the grill. His classic signature chicken. Anyway, that's all the photos I have for this afternoon. And we go back to Greg's footage from the Texas Hill Country. I'll leave you with this clip and we'll see you back here on Friday for another edition of Forecast Lab. Hope you have a great evening. Take care. Bye-bye.